Good morning. Welcome to Mountain Vista Unitarian Universalist, did I say that? Unitarian Universalist Community Congregation. I greet you with a very warm welcome on this delightfully chilly morning. We are a welcoming congregation, and that spirit of welcome is extended to those of you who are joining us physically present, as well as those who are joining us remotely, and also those who may watch the YouTube version of this service in the future. Let us take a minute to greet our friends who are joining us remotely today by turning to wave at the camera while Bob pans the audience. Thank you. We are better and we are stronger because we are here together. I'm Deborah Roberts, the lead pastoral associate here at MEMVUU. By the way, if you want to know a little bit more about what PAs do or have questions for us, please ask one of us after the service. Planning and presenting this service involves the efforts of many people, staff and volunteers, and in this month of gratitude, we want to thank all those who have helped us to make this hour possible and to have it run smoothly. Our settled minister is the Reverend Matthew Funk Crary. Kudos to our music director, the talented Chris Tackett, and to the members of the choir who are singing today. And then back in the AV booth today, we have Alex Stuckey and Vince Sensky, Lee McMealy, Susan Alexander, and Bob Seifried on camera. Thank you all for your efforts. Joel Yelland is not only our hymn leader, but he and his crew provide us with refreshments after the service. Thank you as well to our greeters under the able leadership of Peter Beshkahazi. And our gratitude goes out to someone I don't think we've thanked yet, Donna Bougie, who goes out and picks up the trash. She's our pickup girl. She goes out and picks up the trash in the parking lot ahead of the service. As well as to Warren, who heads up buildings and grounds and makes things work around here. Uh, and last but not least, Stacy Sosa, who heads up religious education. Today is a big day for MVUU. Not only do we have a special ritual of gratitude as part of our service, but afterwards we will have our annual auction, better known as Mesquite Madness. This is our money-making event of the year to the tune of twelve dollars to $15,000. And those who organize this event really deserve our thanks, although they're busy out there and not in here. But I do want to recognize especially Jane, who is Paul, who has headed this up for years, Bonnie Grant Baird, and Paula Lipsitz. Our theme for the month is gratitude, pretty apt for the celebration of Thanksgiving. One of the things that I am most grateful for in my life is MVUU. And that's not just because I met my life partner here. Many of my closest friends here in Tucson are people I know through the church, and I am grateful for their friendship and support and for the loan of a pair of shoes for the upcoming wedding. How did that get in there? I am also thankful for the opportunities provided to me through this congregation. Dance to Heal, Bookaholics, Mahjong, My Caring Circle, Choya Chow Time, Chuck Tatum's upcoming course. Yes, I do want to participate and others that I will bid on during Mesquite Madness. My life is richer, and my mind is more fully engaged because of this religious community. I hope that true, holds true for you, too, and that you have just as many things to be thankful for. Our chalice lighting today is called Transfiguring Love, and it's written by the Reverend Chip Roosh. Deeper than DNA, more fundamental than molecules or quarks at our living core, we are wholeness and transfiguring love. We often forget that power, becoming lonely or resentful, 
comparing ourselves to others, acting out our fears rather than giving our living our glory. Occasionally, we rouse from trance to remember our wholeness. For a time, we embody, embody unsentimental love. We, may, we make efforts to wake others and to remain fully present ourselves. Our lives and our time here together are made sacred by our striving. For the next minutes and for the rest of our lives, may we be more aware of the spirit of life evolving through and among us. So may we be. I hope your morning has been going well. And if not, that singing Spirit of Life Fuente de Amor begins a good morning for each and for all. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join your voices together. The words will be projected and Joel will be leading us. invite you now to a time of contemplation, of considering and pondering the travel down the road of love. I love Rocky Road. <laughs> that sounds a little bit like the Joan Jett and the Blackhearts hit, right? I love rock and roll, but it sounds like Rocky, yeah, you know what I'm saying. What I should say instead is that I love Rocky Road ice cream, the cold melty chocolate, the goopy chocolate chips, peanuts, and marshmallows, the rich flavor with surprises of crunchy and of squishy has been my frozen dessert of choice for as long as I can remember. But I don't eat it anymore, and I haven't for decades. It turns out it is not good for me, the lactose and the sugars and the fats and eating one or two pints at a time. <laughs> it's a rocky road I choose not to go down anymore. Uh-huh, I went there, I totally went there. But I still, I still love it. Of course, it's not the same kind of love that we have just named in the hymn, Fuente de Amor, Fountain of Love. We just sang. The hymn is a translation of Spirit of Life, except for the title. 
and singing them together then, we are saying that the spirit of life is the fountain of love. Fuente de amor es espíritu de la vida. And this fountain of love is not the pleasure of a freezer full of your favorite uh, frozen dessert. It's the foundation of our compassion. It's the movement of our justice. It's in the wind and in the sea, held and carried by plants and animals. It's fundamental to our world. This love arises from the depths deeper than our own DNA. It's the bedrock of existence, and have no doubt it is a rocky road to travel. But you already know that. You know that in your own lives. How much of life, how much of love is hard. And the pleasurable distractions which can confuse us. I mean, if it doesn't feel good, how can it be love? Or the obstacles and oppressions which disabuse us, how can there be love in the midst of power over or hate or violence? And yet there is a love that infuses us. It reminds us of our wholeness it does heal broken hearts, and it builds bridges stronger than divisions. It's powerful enough to change the world. It's powerful enough to change you. Think of that. A love as unifying and universal as gravity. A spirit and fountain of all life alive in the natural world, brought to life through your actions and together through our community. The motion of compassion, the movement of justice, and sometimes a scoop of the best flavor of ice cream. And then we live active in love, despite its rough and sometimes rocky road. When we come to this, arriving awake and aware and active, we are the spirit of life. Nosotros somos a fuente de amor. May we so seek and may we so find this love together. invite you now to a time of meditation to pause perhaps the only pause in your week to pause and to breathe breathe and at this moment center yourself feel your life Feel this community of faith wherever and whenever you are. And feel, too, the challenge of a hard-to-live love and its invitation to life. Harry MacDonald and the Reverend Teresa Cooley teach that love is hard. Love is hard for people, especially those who are different from you. Love that says, I see you as a person. Love that says, let your unique light shine in the world because each of our souls touches divine mystery. Love that says, we're on a journey together and my fate is tied up with yours. Love that grabs you and won't let go until your whole life is dedicated to siding with love. Love that changes the world. Love that is hard. Let's do it anyway. Of all the texts on love, 
This biblical text may be one of the strongest and uh, lays it out in pretty unsporetic terms. And I love the way the choir sounds when they sing this tune. So I wrote a lovely arrangement for them. But um, I can do all the wonderful things and I can be all the wonderful great things and I can speak and I can act and I can do all these things but if I don't do them from love then what are they? We are grateful. We are grateful people. And so last Sunday and today and even next week, we celebrate the leadership of individuals in this congregation with our gratitude. We've been recognizing a total of nine people throughout these Sundays. And our nominating committee members will read biographies about each and individual through individual interviews they've held. And you'll hear more, however, about than just one individual here. You're going to hear a story, our story, of leadership that brings love to life. And so may we listen in gratitude. Good morning. I'm Ann Tatum of the nominating committee. And we have three of our leaders that we want to acknowledge today. Our first is Grace Yelland. We may not catch up with member Grace Yelland each week because she volunteers in the religious exploration room, doing something she loves, working with children. Once in a while, she serves as flutist during the Sunday service. Since Grace, and spouse Joel Yelland moved here in 2021, she has looked for opportunities in the community to be with children. After all, she retired from being a pediatrician and they raised two children at home. When our MVUU building opened in 2022, she began to volunteer each week and she says it is fun. In January, Grace will be teaching owl sexuality education for 7th through 9th graders. Kids are my number one reason for preconceived notions. Grace creates craft projects that children can do, like a recent handcraft print. 
She believes kids always deserve second chances. The relaxed style in RE is by intention, to invite learning and be aware of a child's own needs at a particular time. A child learner might well be hearing the story SUU Church, Grace wrote her own stories for all ages to match the week's sermon, and she read them to the whole congregation. She also had puppets who spoke to the pandemic. Grace participates in MVUU's school partnerships program at Laguna Elementary School, tutoring small groups and assisting in the classroom two days a week. Recently, she did a classroom presentation to go along with a curriculum about Pacific Rim countries. She presented a talk about the region's places where she had visited or lived. She also donates one full day a month to sitting on the Pima County Foster Care Review Board. Grace, for all you do for our congregation, we thank you. Our next leader, is Pi Irwin. Now, Pi recently had knee replacement surgery, and she is just not feeling up to sitting with us today, but she is here on Zoom, and we know you're there, Pi. Hi. When we stopped in-person MVUU services in 2020, member Pi Irwin also then Vice President of the MVUU Board of Trustees, she stepped forward. With Julie Slayton Frank, she set up the caring circle so that we would not lose touch with each other during the pandemic. These small groups provided support as each circle chose its own way to be organized. Times, topics, process. Intended for members and friends to share in a personal way, the caring hearts, as they were called them, were offered to everyone in our community. New people were offered a group, and this goes on through today. This is the fourth year Pi has volunteered with this ministry. Also, while she was vice president, the congregation searched and found a new home, a quote, sometimes turbulent process, she said. Pi led the council meetings twice yearly and served ex officio on the new building ambiance team in 2020. But in those same years, Pai was organizer of the Baja Four Presence at the Tucson Festival of Books. Pai then served three years on the nominating committee through last June. I think the committee, Pai said, while we are a covenantal of our vision. Pai was part of enlarging the scope of nominating from selecting candidates for election to developing leaders, recognizing leaders, and letting the congregation become aware of the roles leaders play. Pai and her spouse, Jean Boisoltan, joined MVUU in 2016, while still spending half the year in Gross Point, Michigan, and they became full-time residents here in 2020. Earlier in life, Pai raised her family in Tucson as a member of UUCT. She worked as a teacher, principal, staff development researcher, and her assistant superintendent for TUSD, and was an adjunct professor at the U of A. Later, she moved to a superintendent's job in Illinois. Aren't we glad she moved back here? Pi, for all you do for MVUU, we thank you. And our third person you have already seen today, it's Debbie Roberts. In 2018, Debbie Roberts joined the Pastoral Associates, encouraged by her partner, Tom Sawyer. Since 2021, she has led the team which plans the services, both with Reverend Matthew and for the Sundays, he is not in the pulpit. This year, she has worked with Robin Bossell co-leading. Although Debbie came to MVU, in 2010, when she retired from teaching in Massachusetts, she was a winter resident going back to her Cape Cod home during the summers. She met Tom at MVUU in 2016. 
after they both attended a Mesquite Madness Super Bowl party. There's one out there in the auction. <laughs> Debbie joined the MVU board from 2015 to 2017 while she was still a snowbird and was the first to do so. She always sang in choir and for the last several years in the music group UU4X. Did I say that? UU4X. UU4X, U4X. She also served as MVU membership chair and then for a second time for a year in 2018. Answering the call once more in 2019, she's vacancy. During the pandemic, when we were Debbie co-led the ambiance team with Elizabeth Van Horn, furnishing and decorating the new space. She said she was amazed they were able to do so much by Zoom meetings in their creative process for this visual project. Volunteering has long been a way of life for Debbie. She's been a UU since 1988 in Brewster, Massachusetts, and later in Needham, Massachusetts, where she enjoyed being chair of the Fun and Fellowship Committee, and of course, singing in the choir and the first parish singers group. Debbie has worn several educational hats during her career. Classroom teacher, teacher trainer, department head, program director, and specialist for foreign languages in the state of Massachusetts. Her love of our desert is reflected in the color choices throughout our building. Debbie, for all that you do for us at MB MBUU, we thank you. In our celebration of new members, we say that our church is more than a building, more than a minister, it is all of us. And it relies on leaders like Grace and Pi and Debbie. And I'd like to uh, invite you both to come forward. Join me here. Pi is online. And if we can, we will show um, her as well. Everyone's waving to you right now. Please, if you would stand right here. It's your wisdom, your passions, which have been guides for our congregation into our covenant. As we've already heard, individually you have given much, but as you know, leadership in our congregation is not the result of your individual impact, but the ripple that you've created out among us, rolling through our members and our friends and our children and our guests and then together out into the world. And with this in mind, I want to invite everyone here present and on Zoom to join in a ritual of giving thanks. And so will all of those who have served with Grace Yellen on committees or in projects, please rise in body or in spirit. Will all of those who have served with Pi Irwin on committees and in projects rise in body or in spirit? Will all of those who have served with Debbie Roberts on committees or in projects also rise in body or in spirit? And here we go, get ready. Will all of those who have felt the ripple, who have benefited from the work of the committees and projects that these individuals have led, rise in body or in spirit? And will everyone else Rise in body or in spirit, knowing that even today, if you are our guest for the first time, you are feeling the ripple of their leadership from these three women. And I invite you all to join hands or touch elbows as you feel comfortable, forming an interdependent web of members and of friends and of guests. And I want to invite the two of you to step forward or step closer. There we go, right there. Individually, you have given us so much. And we thank you for the ripple among us. And that's your line during this. We, for this, we thank you. If you put that up on there, I'll take my hand back just for a minute. Join me in that for a second. For this, we thank you. Nice. 
Dear leaders, you have served us well, and for this we thank you. You have led steadily for years, and in the time you have handed over the reins, you have so carefully held and tended, and for this we thank you. You have attended endless meetings, written countless emails, and led us and learned alongside us. You have brought this to life the spirit of love, shown us the deep abiding faith growing and evolving in our community and this congregation, and for this we thank you. you have helped us devote ourselves to learning about our faith for all ages. Embrace the human diversity by welcoming individuals and families of all kinds, and join with the larger community to promote love, justice, and service to society. And for this we thank you. And would the two of you then read this together? and grateful that others take on the roles and give their gifts as we have. For the opportunity to put on and take off these leadership hats, we thank you. For the opportunity to serve, we thank you. For all of those joining here in this ritual and remotely, you have an opportunity to lead. From your passion, from what you would offer this congregation. And so may this litany serve as a reminder that we all have the ability and the obligation to say yes, to share in our passions, and also to say yes in stepping down after a time, even if it seems like there's nobody there to take your place. We trust that all of us will find the right way to nurture our spirits and to serve our community. For this, we... Thank, thank you. you. And? For this, we thank you. Thank you. We have a rose for each of you. Be careful because there are thorns, but you know that that's how leadership works. <laughs> we have one for you as well, Pi, and Anne will be dropping it off later today. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we can applaud, because I know you've been wanting to. As part of our ritual, this three Sundays, we are singing for all that is our life. And so in a moment, we'll have you rise in body or in spirit again and join your voices together with Joel leading us to sing our gratitude. <laughs>
gift which we are called to use to build the common good and make our own days glad. The day I bow my head in recognition of the great service and sacrifice that some have been asked and chosen to make. Living through the horror that is war, facing death or physical harm, as a specter looming around the corner, we can say thank you to veterans and know that it is never enough. And so help us to embrace those who have been sent forth in our names in danger. Give us strength of will to serve them as they have served us. May they never hunger. May they never thirst. May there always be meaningful work for their hands. May they receive healing care in abundance, and may we as grateful heirs to a nation built on the idea of liberty, be faithful to pursuing that dream with our own lives, our actions. Help us to be vigilant and never complacent. And may each of us take personally, take personally our love and thanks for veterans who have served us. May it be so, and may it be so. Amen. A rabbi, an imam, and a minister walk into a bar. <laughs> and the barkeep looks at them and said, is this some kind of a joke? Think about it. There have been have also had the same reception. Among Jews and Muslims, Christian, Baha'i, Buddhists, even Sikhs, their leaders, we've been recognized and treated as a joke, belittled, mocked, even laughed at. Not that it mattered. As through our many different languages, our diverse faiths, we were gathered in love. A U.S. Senator comes to mind, lecturing four of us about consumerism and how it was more important than human life. I can remember spiteful people spitting at us on the steps of a courthouse as we offered to marry any, all couples, the day that same-sex marriage became the law in California. And I recall very well October 24th, 2009, the taunting of neo-Nazis as we gathered to rally against their hate coming into our community. There were only 20 Nazis in total, and but their symbols and their salutes, their SS costumes and their smiles. It spoke disgusting volumes, louder than the hundreds who came to counter protest. Hundreds came and lined the street opposite the Nazis, among them rabbis, imams, ministers, priests of many faiths. Rabbi Suzanne from Temple Bethel, Dr. Kuko from the Islamic Center, Deacon John from the Catholic Church, and Reverend Jane from the UCC Church. We found one another in the midst of a protesting crowd, and we didn't quite know what to do when we got there because the situation had already gotten out of hand. Both groups were along two sides of a major street not further apart than the length of our sanctuary. And in the middle ran a median, and on that were police 
in riot gear with their faces covered. And they were facing the counter-protest because it had grown inflamed and angry, chaotic, and perhaps even on the verge of losing control in response to the swastika and to the smug hate. We felt the disgust. And prote protesters were reacting to it. Those directly across from the Nazis, their faces were distorted in a rage. And their screams were foul insults. And they were threatening violence. Individually, our clergy group might have chosen to join in. I might have chosen to join in. But together, we reminded and called one another through our many languages, our diverse faiths. We were there to love. And we put our hearts together and came up with a plan. They sent me back to my church, the Universalist Unitarian Church of Riverside, where I picked up the newly delivered Side with Love banner. And I think it's going to show up. Returning, I had found that the tension had grown worse. The raging crowd had grown and started pushing against the barriers, holding them from crossing the street. The enjoyment of the Nazis felt bigger, too. It was as if this is exactly what they had shown up for. And so methodically, our clergy group followed our plan. We unrolled the banner, and away from the conflict and the crowd, we draped it over the barricade so that its message could be seen, seen by the police seen by the Nazis. And then hand over hand, we began to pass it, moving its way up the street, giving it to the ones who were in front, shifting and shuffling so that somehow we could stay pacing with it. Slowly, hand over hand, it entered into the space of the confrontation among the fear and the rage of the counter-protesters. We had gotten separated, dispersed into the crowd, and yet I could look over my shoulder and I could see Dr. Kuko. I could see Reverend Jane, Rabbi Suzanne, Deacon John. And so we still were connected and bringing a calm and a peace, bringing love. But since it was my church's new banner, and I didn't want to lose it, I kept pace along the front line of the passage, and so I was there to see the Nazis' reaction. They laughed, and they hooted, and they hollered in exaggerated mocking at those words, side with love. And in the middle of a still angry crowd, connected to beloved colleagues, behind a banner of our faith, I saw them. I saw them. Broken human beings, so mistaken and flawed in their own hurt that they thought their actions should be to try to make the rest of the world reflect it. We should look and act like they felt. And even though my pulse still races and stomach still aches and I could clench a fist, I still saw them. And witnessing them, I did the only thing that seemed right to do, and I bowed in love. I bowed and I bowed and I bowed as their mocking turned to disbelief. Their faces softened, their voices stilled. 
and our eyes met, and maybe, maybe, maybe they felt loved. Maybe. Because, damn, love is hard. Love for people especially you find despicable. Who treat your values as a joke. Disregard human worth. Who hate you. And love still says, I see you as a person. Love still says, I can feel the light still within you no matter how hard you try to hide it. Because each of our souls touches that divine mystery. Love that says, we're on a journey together and my fate is tied up to your fate, is tied up to our fate. Love that grabs you, won't let you go, until your whole life is dedicated to siding with love. Love that changes the world because it changes you. Damn, love is hard. Let's do it anyway. And let's be grateful that we can. Our closing hymn is number 18, What Wondrous Love. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join your voices together with Joel leading us. our service to a close today, I have a few announcements. As you leave the church today and the table that's just outside the door, you will find two baskets. Well, you will find the wooden bowl and contributions that go into that wooden bowl are used for the, to keep this church running. There is also a woven basket and every month we have a charity that is a recipient of the, um, whatever is put into that woven basket. For this month, our um, recipient is the Emerge Center Against Domestic Violence, a very worthy charity, and um, I hope that you will contribute to that as well. In case you didn't know it, today is Mesquite Madness, okay? And as I said earlier, this is our major fundraiser of the year. It's a long tradition here at MVU, and you will be able to fill up your social calendar for the winter months today. 
Um, if you have never participated before, the first step is to get a wristband with a number at the table that's also out in the oasis, and then you will go back, uh, you will go on to the patio, and there are tables, and the tables are arranged in chronological, no, that's not what I want to say, in numerical order. So, and there's a sign on each table that has the numbers of the items that are available at that table. So it's a very well organized, and thanks again to that crew. Now, if you have never participated before, you are lucky folks today because you get a 10 minute jump on the rest of us. So if it's your first time, you will be able to enter and begin your bidding, um, and then 10 minutes later, the rest of us will storm the Bastille and um, do our bidding. Um, also today, we have going on in the Oasis, back in this corner, and the you, you Meet Yourself. It's our give, showing gratitude to the many people who lead our pro programs and projects. Please stop, get some popcorn I saw out there, and learn about the hard work and leadership that many provide. You may even find yourself saying yes to an opportunity to serve our congregation. And also, an ongoing project is the Seven Altars Project. Um, they are set up around our congregation, and if you want to find all of them, you're going to have to find, climb the stairs in back of me. Um, for All Souls, Hallowtide, Dia de los Muertos, and the Day of the Dead. These will only be up for one more Sunday when we will switch to seven new altars for the winter holidays. If you are interested in crafting one of these winter holiday altars, please see Reverend Matthew, or for also for Christmas, New Year's, or Yule. Whew. Okay, as we, as we extinguish this flame, a symbol of our shared journey and community spirit, let us take a moment to express our deepest gratitude Gratitude for all the things in our lives that bring us joy, that challenge us, and that help us to grow as individuals and as members of this community. As we leave this sacred space, may we carry gratitude in our hearts for the work done, the love shared, and the connections forged. The chalice may be extinguished, may be extinguished for now, but the spirit of service and community endures. Blessings to all who have given of themselves for the greater good. May their efforts continue to inspire and guide us in the days to come. Mm -hmm. 